everyone, welcome to today's video. It's an old school tutorial with voiceover on this look here, purple eyeshadow for spring. It's quite a subtle colour with delicate shimmer extending up towards the brow bone. Let's get started. I'm going to skip through the base quickly because I have other videos showing more detailed application. This primer from Misha gives a slight pinkish sheen to the skin. I'm using a very lightweight foundation to keep the base fresh and natural. It can be blended out with the fingers, making it quick and easy to use, and any marks removed with a sponge. I'm building up a little extra coverage where I get some redness. I'm going to use a peach toned corrector under the eyes to help cancel out darkness. This is another easy to apply creamy formula. Can you see the difference? I certainly can. Moving on to our second under eye concealer. This is going to add a light to medium coverage that's compatible with the coverage given by the foundation and also brighten the under eye area. I like blending this out with my finger because sometimes a sponge absorbs too much of the product as this is quite a fluid formula. Now I'm adding a little more of the corrector where I still see some darkness. Moving on to concealer for the face, sticking to a light to medium coverage product that will blend nicely with the foundation. Time for some blush. Because we're putting purple on the eyes, I'm sticking to a colour pink that's more of a cooler tone for the cheeks. I love cream blush, and I find stamping it on with a sponge is the best way of applying most cream blush formulas. I'm also adding it to the temples to help create a gently sun-kissed vibe. Plus, a little into the eye socket to act as a transition shade for the eyeshadow. I'm starting to get confused about what number step we're at. This product is a sort of bronzer slash highlight combo. On my skin tone it bronzes, but it's certainly glowy and it could act as a subtle highlight for someone with a deeper skin tone. One of the reasons I like this so much is that it's really easy to blend and it's quite sheer, so it's hard to go over the top if you do have really pale skin. It's also not too orange. Time for cream highlight. If you have a cooler undertone to your skin, you could use a pinkish highlight with this look, but I'm going to stick with my usual pale gold. And, as always, I'm applying this with a brush, not directly onto the face. And yeah, I'm about to give up on this numbering thing. It's time to work on the eyes. I'm going to use this purple potted liner as the base for my eyeshadow look, so that we can get a nice vibrant purple when we apply the other shadows on top. Because it is more of a liner than a cream shadow, it isn't the easiest to blend, but I'm taking a stiff brush that will be able to move the product and putting a little bit of work in to build up the colour closer to the lash line and blend it out so that we get a gradient effect as we move towards the brow bone. Because this liner dries down quite quickly and can go a bit patchy if you try to blend it once it starts to dry, I've applied this before powder. This way it can mix a little with the creaminess of the concealer and become a little bit more blendable. Again, I'm just slowly building up the colour and blending it out into a nice gradient. I'm taking a little directly on the brush now to build up colour at the outer edge of the eye where I want a slight winged out shape. This is really a case of being patient and taking your time. And you don't really need to see the other eye. <laughs> on top of the purple I've just laid down, I'm applying a slightly metallic purple pressed powder shadow with a fluffy brush. I haven't set the under eyes yet, so I'm tapping off the brush to minimise fallout. This shadow will make the cream base underneath budge proof, as well as build up the depth of the purple colour. So if it's starting to get warm now where you live, this technique of layering cream and powder shadows is a good way to make sure your eyeshadow doesn't go anywhere. And I've completely forgotten what number we're up to. Never mind. Now I'm going to set the face with translucent powder. The base products have already dried down a lot by themselves, so I don't need to apply too much. This powder contains hyaluronic acid, and it's definitely less drying than others I've used. I've also used this powder in the heat, and it's held up brilliantly against sweat. I also love this Real Techniques brush because it's so flipping massive, it makes it so quick to set the face. The next step is to add a little contour with a cool toned powder. I'm using a small setting brush and gently blending in circular motions. I'm focusing on blending upwards towards the cheekbone instead of down, so that the face stays looking lifted. This powder may be light, but it's also really pigmented, so I haven't had to dip back into my compact yet. If you can, I'd recommend using your left hand for the left side of your face. It'll help keep it matching the other side. I'm also going to lightly contour the jawline to make my chin look a little smaller and more pointed, plus add a tiny amount on the forehead and nose. This highlight palette I use more as an eyeshadow. 
The glow on it is really good, but a lot of the colours aren't really great for my face. Today I'm using the purple shade as an inner corner highlight and also blending it across onto the inner third of the eyelid as well as up into the inner part of the crease because we're really embracing shimmer all over today. It got a little too intense for my liking, so I'm blending it out a little with what remains on my eyeshadow brush as well as my face brush. That's better. Continuing with the eyes, we're going to step up this purple look with this cream shadow I have from Max Factor. It has a moussey texture, and although it looks very purple in the pot, it's actually quite a sheer product, which is why we've laid the other products down before it. The shimmer in this is really beautiful. It's lighter than the purple base we've created, and the glitter particles have a sort of iridescent shift to them. A lot of the time we avoid putting shimmer in and above the crease, but I actually think it looks super pretty and carefree. The younger you are and the fewer eye wrinkles you have, the better this all over shimmer looks, so you might as well enjoy experimenting with it while you're young. I'll leave a little bit of my left eye in here, just so you can get a good chance to see the effect on my right eye as I move my head and the light catches it. This brush doesn't have any additional product on it, I'm just using it to make sure everything is blended. For the lower lash line, I'm taking this eyeshadow stick from Kiko that's pink, but has a little bit of purplish shimmer to it. This colour is going to tie in with the lip colour we're applying later. I'm adding some of the metallic purple eyeshadow I used on the lid to blend out the pink shadow stick and bring the eye look together. Then some of the Max Factor Purple Shimmer just on the inner portion of the lower lash line to bring more light towards the inner corner. Now for the brows. I wish this brow pencil made it clearer which end was the pencil and which end was the spoolie. Because this eyeshadow is very soft and blown out, I'm using my darkest brow pencil today so that the brows can bring some structure to the look. I'll skip through this quite quickly, but you can see I'm adding additional pencil to the bottom edge of the brow to create a clear and defined line between the shadows and the brows. Moving back to the face for a second, I'm using my Hourglass Finishing Powders to add a little more luminosity to the skin, and the highlight from this palette and a Tarte Fan Brush to add some glow to the Cupid's bow. I decided that, as I'm not using eyeliner today because I want the focus to be on the purple shimmer, I need to use a little shadow to subtly add a little depth to the upper lash line. A brush this shape is really handy for getting in close to the lashes with either shadow or a potted liner. This grey eyeshadow won't dominate the look like Blackwood, and it also has shimmer in it, so it blends in well to the existing purple. For the waterline, I'm adding nude liner to brighten the eyes, but in a more subtle way than a white liner would. Lips. I actually have three lip shades to show you with this look, but I'm going to start with a girly pinky purple shade. This purple lipstick is quite intense, so I'm applying only the smallest amount and blending it out. I'm not using a lip liner because I want to keep the makeup really soft and blurred. On top, I'm adding a sparkly gloss. This looks more pink than anything else, but it actually contains purple shimmer particles, which I think you can just about see on camera. If this girly pink isn't for you, I have two other lip looks to show you at the end of the video. Of course, I need to douse my skin in setting spray to add more glow to the face. This one from Beauty Pie is actually really nice and really does make my makeup last longer. Of course, we need to add some mascara. Nothing exciting to see here. I'm using my usual combo. Using a mascara with a rubber wand first separates and lengthens the lashes and then a waterproof formula with a traditional bristle wand locks everything in and adds volume. I've been using this duo for ages now and I doubt I'll be changing anytime soon. I'm also going to add a little of the waterproof mascara to my lower lashes. I managed to transfer a small blob of mascara onto my under eye, but if this happens, don't worry, just wait for it to dry and then you can remove it with a spoolie. The final step is some brow gel. This is the Clear Boy Brow from Glossier. I'm going to brush the hairs upwards to make the brows look a little more natural and fluffy, particularly towards the tail of the brows. I absolutely love this brow gel, the applicator is perfect. And that is pretty much it. After dabbing off the lips to take down the intensity slightly, we are done with this look. But before I go, as promised, I'm going to quickly show you two other lip colours to go with this look. 
The first is a pale nude. The exact colour you choose will depend on what flatters your own skin tone. This is a little easier to wear than the pink glitter and will keep the focus on the eyes. The second isn't really a spring look and it's a bit washed out here by my lighting in the bathroom, but if you're feeling more vampy, less girly, a deep purple, brown or burgundy lip will also complement this eye look. And that's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't find purple the easiest colour to work with, but I really enjoy this springtime look. Hopefully, if I get a little closer here, you can see how pretty this shimmer is. I hope this encourages you to have a play with shimmer in the crease and shows that it can be subtle and wearable. I hope you're all keeping well. See you next time.